All right, guys, how y'all doing? I am taping this while it is fresh on the dome, okay? This will be a voiceover and uh, probably me driving, okay? If not, it is what it is. Let me get into Real Housewives of Atlanta. Yeah, it seemed like Kenya is going to bring the drama again, okay? Kenya and Matt. Y'all, do y'all believe Matt that we punched the driver? Do y'all believe this dude did that? What a coincidence that Kenya and Matt showed up at the same time in Charlotte at Bar One or wherever the fuck they at. And you know what? I'm sorry. But anyway, y'all, we know real, unreal, true, untrue. Let's let's start back where it started from. Candy and one of her employees is pissed the fuck off. He's been working for her for over four or five years. He's been the wedding planner. He's been the maid. He's been the butler. He's been the babysitter. He's been the dog walker. He's been a dog catcher. He's been it all, okay? He's helped with the bedroom candy. Whatever you can say, he has done. He is unhappy with his pay. Don Juan said he fired him. And uh, he goes on social media and posts up that candy fake. Don't work them fake motherfuckers or something like that. Candy sees him. And uh, she approaches him and asks, you know, she confronts him, what's going on? What's the problem, young man? He's saying that he don't appreciate what you've been paying him. And she's like, you've been accepting this, you've been taking this. And what blew my hair back is when he went to go see Phaedra after Candy terminates him and tell him his services is no longer needed. But with a little gangster ghetto, get your motherfucking ass up out of here. We don't need you no more. And you don't like what I'm paying you. Hit the motherfucking dough. Y'all know Candy Hood. Motherfucker this and motherfucker that was coming out her mouth on Nationwide TV. Okay. So I don't feel bad on YouTube swearing. But anyway, he gets mad. He exits. He looks back like, did this bitch just do this to me? Did she really just check me? <laughs> I was like, I'm so hood. I wear my hair like that. She got her ghetto gangster ponytail on. You know that long one that we throw from side to side. That bum question in where? Yes. Yes. Yes, she do. <laughs> You ain't here for me because I ain't the one to gossip. But anyway, y'all, me and my six personalities is laying here doing this video. <laughs> anyway, he decides he wants to sue her and he goes and see Phaedra. <laughs> Miss Phony Fei Fei is throwing shade. She's saying, you know, she didn't take the case because she didn't want the old lady gang and the candy, the bedroom candy click and everybody to jump on whoop her if she decided to go in because she is not petty wop and sue candy motherfucking ass but she tells him you know you do have a case she saying uh i can't believe you was over there working like a slave or slavery over whatever in other words that bitch should have been paying you more money you let that hoe get away with that shit my nigga my nigga, my nigga, hey, hey. my motherfucking nigga, hey, hey, my nigga, my nigga. So she tries to be a lady and she's shading candy from left to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. She's shading her ass like a motherfucker. Y'all, when candy come over there and snatch that hoe up, I'm just going to step back, cut my TV all the way the fuck up. And I'm going to go get that ass. Candy, beat that ass. Beat that ass. <laughs> so anyway, Pedro tells him, you know, I can point you in, in. You know, this is not my field, but I can point you in the right direction. And of course, you have a case. But what may, what may you think may be a case, another lawyer may say, hey, you accept these terms. You worked up under these conditions. And... <laughs> Y'all didn't have a contract, and you did accept this money, so you may not have a case. So, you know, that's for someone to determine whether they'll take the case, and that's whether it's to be won in the court of law. Judge Judy. Calling up Judge Judy. Judge Judy. Hello, this is Miss Tiki. Yes. Um, Phaedra say, Bonnie Fei Fei, the one who husband was stealing people credit scores and shit. Um, sh phony Fei Fei say this dude got a case. Oh, do we? Yes, I'm going to send him over and, 
I need you to con- consult him. And can you please let us know on the Real Housewives of Atlanta, is he going to be able to sue her now? Okay. All right, Miss Tiki. Okay, Judge Judy, go on, take your ass to bed because I hear you got some shit going on in your backyard too. You know, you ain't here for me, but I heard that you and your husband get ready to get a divorce because uh, he caught your ass cheating on him. Girl, no, yes, Judge Judy, but you ain't here for me because I don't want your ass suing me. I ain't got nothing but some old ass kids and some cute little grandbabies you can have. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, move right along. Move right along, Miss Portia. Uh, Miss Dot Dot Dot. Da, 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 da. Like uh, Kia say, she going to be uh, trotting her way or uh, 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 twerking her way into 2017. So anyway, uh, Miss Portia, the house she's renting, she's cleaning it up. She's turning it in. She's not going to release it because now she's able to purchase her own. She's able to purchase. Well, she has purchased her own home and she's rubbing it in Cordell's face. It's a million dollar home. And she's like, fuck you, my nigga. I got my own shit. I got my own shit. I don't need you, my nigga. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. Let me stop y'all. Anyway, so she's seeing a new little boy, Todd. And uh, she invited him. She had to move into their mother house because she hasn't bought the house yet. She's looking. You know, all of them buying these million-dollar houses. Like, they just throwing that shit away like candy. It's like candy. So, uh, the young man comes into town that she's dating, fucking shooting scenes with, whatever the fuck y'all want to call it. And, uh, they meet up at mama house. So, you know, she said they haven't had sex yet, but you know, for this boy to be taping with her on camera with her, y'all know Portia throwing that ass up in the circle. And I ain't mad. Do what you got to do, but boy, I ain't mad at you. Do you. And, uh, get it how you live. I keep telling y'all, get it how you live. So, they meet. We got a meeting in the ladies' room. They got a meeting in the ladies' room, and she like uh, look like a, a, a fucking um. <laughs> it ain't a candle, y'all. They like just holding lit a trash bag, and she taking it around. She said she done cut off all the fire uh, signals in the house, so they don't go off in the fire department. Don't show up. This bitch burning paper and burning it and doing a seance because she want to get all the evil spirits or something out the house. I don't know. But when she was doing it across this private spot up and down, I said, this bitch going to burn this motherfucker up. And he laying this little stupid ass there because <laughs> he trying to get laid. He wants some poo nanny. So he laying there letting this hoe do this uh, voodoo shit across his ass because he wants some pussy, y'all. Some poo nanny. You know, y'all, excuse me. I mean to say that word. He wants some poo nanny. So anyway, he laying there. Yeah, they giggling and then they decide, you know, <laughs> her silly ass. She falls off the goddamn bed. They try to eat some whipped cream and strawberries. But she tried to claim that the whipped cream that was found in the house she was moving out of was her mama's. But this motherfucker got some strawberry and whipped cream for this boy. So, you know what, Portion, I think the whipped cream and strawberries belong to you. You are the guilty person. So, you know, we ain't mad, do you, boo-boo. You got your eggs and you strengthening your vagina. You trying to make your coochie tight and everything because you trying to make a baby. And I ain't mad at you. Do what you got to do, boo-boo. Do you. Okay, I just hope he's very intelligent because his I, the baby IQ may not be that high. And I love you, Portia. You're cute and everything, but something ain't there, girl. When you fell off that bed, I know we be laughing and joking and giggling and having fun. And I done did shit like that and you be done fail or you drunk or something. But you weren't even drunk, Portia. But, you know, anyway, they look like they get ready to knock it out the box or test the waters or do whatever. So we move right along. Cynthia decides to come down with Kenya to bar one. Peter is opening up a bar one. He hires um, Kenya to, I don't know, show up, uh, um, appearance fee. I don't know what the fuck he had her for. And she said, yes, she will come. So at that time, I guess her and Matt was still dating. And uh, he booked the tickets for them to come. She invited Cynthia. Cynthia said, yes, I'll go down with you. And supposedly Peter didn't know Cynthia was coming. When he seen her, he was telling her how beautiful she was, basically how much I miss you, my house three minutes away. And she looked at him like, and your point? And at that point, when he told her he lived three minutes away and she did not jump on it, I then realized that the divorce is real. They are 
divorcing in real life because he even told her you know you still mrs thomas you know miss thomas or whatever and uh she just looked at him but she was giving him plenty of compliments he made sure he told everybody he hadn't seen her in seven months so is this the end i want to know i want to know yes i think it's the end so anyway anyway kenya pulls up because cynthia's sitting there telling Todd and uh, Peter, well, basically just Peter because Todd showed up. She pulls Peter aside that Kenya is afraid to come because Matt is acting a goddamn fool. She asked uh, Peter, did he have anything to do with that? He said he canceled the trip because Kenya told him that Matt was cutting up, but he did not want to get in the middle of that. Matt decides to drive three and a half hours to go down there and kick that bitch ass. And I can understand sometimes you just be that mad because Kenya pulls some slick shit. Sometimes you be mad enough to drive a country motherfucking mile to whip a nigga's ass. And he was. So he drove all the way down to Charlotte to get with her ass. She's sitting in the Uber and she's telling the driver, don't let him in. He walks up to the car. The driver had the window cracked a little. And I guess he was sticking his head in there to try to talk to her. This motherfucker let the window up. This is the story Matt told. So he reached in there. He punched that motherfucker. So, of course. The cameras are rolling. Matt jumps in the car. Take off. That's smart, Matt, because we don't want you to go to jail. We don't want you to go to jail. This motherfucker, ah, sound effects. It's great as a motherfucker. He bails the fuck off. I go, yes, yes. Go, Matt. Go, Matt. Go, Matt. So then Cynthia uh, runs out there. Uh, Kenya, I don't know. She calls Cynthia tell her to come out there. And when Cynthia tell Kenya that Matt just struck the driver, they tell Peter, Peter runs out there. And when he look and he see the car is the getaway car is in full effect. <laughs> Todd and um Peter calls Matt on the telephone. He confesses. He hits the guy on nationwide TV. Dumbass. And now I'm quite sure they probably got a warrant out for his arrest. And that is basically what happened with my Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you guys, y'all have a lucky day.